How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 14 in my introduction to Python series. Last couple of videos we made an application together where we made a number guessing game but now we're gonna get back into learning about some stuff in Python. So the next couple of videos we are gonna be focusing on abstract data types. This video is gonna be the set. Next video is gonna be the dictionary. Uh, think back to the tutorial number 11. We learned about lists. A list, collection of data, and in Python you can throw anything in a list. You can throw in strings, numbers, and you can mix and match. So a list can contain a string and then the next element could be a number and then a boolean. So you can throw whatever you want to in a list. And you can have the same thing multiple times. I could have the number 9 in there as many times as I wanted to. The definition of a set is a collection, an unordered collection of unique elements. So, it's a collection like a list, stores stuff, but um, unordered, so order does not matter. And, let me just show you here, if you look at the list methods, there's a sort method. You look at uh, sets, sets do not have the sort method order does not matter they can't be sorted uh, and, and then like I said unique elements so the list can like I said can contain the number nine as many times as it wants you can keep adding the number nine as many times as you feel like to a set it's only going to keep one of them in there when you display all this stuff in that set so Every item in a set only occurs once, and it's in some random order. Even though it might be in a uh, sorted order, it doesn't have to be. So here we go. I want to, before we start coding in Notepad, I want to go over some stuff in PowerShell. So open up PowerShell and run the Python command. First thing, I want to make a list. So list, and we'll set that equal to the numbers from 0 to 9, so range... 10 and I'm just going to print out the list and you'll see a uh, list is defined using uh, square brackets so we could define the exact same list by using square brackets and just separating each element by a comma so I'm going to do that hopefully quickly oops I forgot a 1 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, and close it off the square bracket. Get the exact same thing. And with a list, we can add to it. So list.append, let's keep the trend going, add the number 10 to it. But now, let's add, say, the number five. So list.append five. Now I'm going to display the list. Added the number 10, but it also added the number 5. We already have a 5 here. Um, and I'll come back to that in a minute. To define a set, what you can do, so I'm going to create a variable called asset with an underscore separating it, and I'm going to, I can define this two ways. I can either do the exact same thing as a list except for put the uh, items between curly braces, or I can take a list and typecast it by using the set method. And then inside the brackets, you can put your list. So I'm going to do that. Now watch what happens when I print out a set. You'll notice here, the order didn't change. So it can be in order, like I said. It doesn't have to be. But you'll notice the 5 disappeared because it is a collection of unique items. Well, five already appeared here, so any other five in this list is going to be removed. Next, we're going to create a set using curly braces. So I'm going to create uh, a set two and set that equal to. And inside curly braces, just put a bunch of random numbers. So five, six, seven, five, nine, five, four, three, five, six. All right. Now when I print it out, a set two, 
it only kept all the unique elements. And like I said, it's random order. So even though five occurred first doesn't mean it's going to keep the five at that index. It ended up keeping this five right here. And you'll notice the uh, nine ended up at the end. Four ended up up here. So it is unordered. It's completely unordered. And if I did a list, so I'll take my list, list.sort. And there, the list is sorted with the fives together. And it's going to cause an error, but I'll do it anyway just to show you. So a set to dot sort. It's going to give an error because that method does not exist. You can't sort a set. That's all I really wanted to talk about. Um, just using PowerShell. Now we're actually going to do some work with Notepad. So I created this file called sets.py. Um, we've used the random function before, or the random package before. Um, in our number guessing game, we used random and the rand int method to get our random number for the user to guess. We're going to use the shuffle method now. And I create this list and set it equal to the range of a million numbers. So the number is 0 to 999,999. And then I shuffled the list. So now this is just a random order. And now I'm going to create a set and set it equal to and typecast it and pass in list. What I'm going to show in this demonstration you might wonder why would I use a set you know you can't sort it so that's obviously a downfall um, you know what are the benefits beyond using a list well finding something locating something in a set is a lot faster among other benefits so to show you what I mean uh, quit out of Python and now we're going to run this, so navigate to where you got your file saved, python minus i, sets.py. So what I want to do here is, um, I'm going to run a for loop, so for x in range, let's do range 1000, and inside here oops I forgot a bracket there my bad you gotta put brackets around the a thousand and indent it and in here we are going to create a boolean so what we found and all this boolean is gonna be is um, just pick a random number so 100 so found equals 100 in list so all this is going to do is return a boolean. I'm just doing this because if I just had 100 in list, it would just keep printing out true or false. So why am I doing this? We're going to run this, and it's a thousand times going to take the number 100 and search for it in this list that we have created. And just going to get an idea of how fast that is. So close it and start counting. See how long it takes. So, I don't know. Eight seconds, maybe. I didn't really count, actually. Now we're going to do the same thing again. So, another for loop. But this time, we are going to do found equals 100 in set. So, a thousand times, it's going to look for the number 100 in our set. Don't blink. Here we go, three, two, one. Found already. That's how much faster it is to search in a set. So it took about eight seconds for it to find the number 100 a thousand times in our list, whereas it took a fraction of a second to do it in a set. If you have a ton of data, this is helpful. If you're doing data mining, Python's used a lot for data mining where you're just searching through massive amounts of data, a set can be useful. And let me just look at my notes. I think that's all I wanted to talk about for now. We might come back to sets a little bit later. But um, I just really wanted to show you how much faster they are. Uh, my first computer science class in university uh, was in Python. 
and we had to make this music library app and every time you searched for like an album in your music library that you made it took like a minute to search for it the next class he taught us how to use sets and then all our music libraries it would take like a fraction of a second to find a CD in that music library so that's why I love sets that's why I think they're great because of all the time I wasted waiting for my code to find an album or something but yeah that's all I really want to talk about in this video don't want to bore you with a story of my education Thank you guys for watching. Please comment on the video, like the video, and subscribe. Check in next video to learn about dictionaries, and I will see you in my next tutorial.